All right, I want to talk about these playtest notes that are in the back of Eldridge Cook. Now, this is something that James roggie has been using in his own games, and it's apparently not going to replace the Lamentations rules anytime soon, but it's, it's the wave of the future, supposedly. And the thing is, when I compare the different versions of TSR d and I would get confused about the minute differences between the actual game and the retro clone. And eventually I just gave up and went all the way back to first edition. Because first edition I can run from memory for the most part. I don't really need the books, though it's helpful to be able to look something up. I don't, and I can just open it to that exact page if I need to look something up. So I wasn't inclined to adopt a new system. But when I got the Rules and Magic book for Lamentations, and originally I just downloaded the free version, it was the game I knew. It was exactly like the TSR versions with just a few changes that made it better. Better enough that I converted over. This is not the game I knew. This is different. And I did try try using these rules for Adero's character for so some we could try it out. It wasn't that bad. It's just it's not the game I knew. If I were coming into Lamentations as a new player or a new DM and I saw these rules as the standard rules I'd probably not adopt them because it's not the TSR game I grew up with so let's go into what's so different about it first of all I've had some complaints about my blurry thing but it's my old camera that won't focus even when I tell it to so first of all Charisma is used for saving throws against magic, not intelligence like it used to be. And instead of getting a bonus on standard save, you get different numbers of dice depending on how high your score is. Another thing that's different is instead of getting a bonus for a high constitution, your constitution determines the size of your hit dice no matter what class you are. Uh, there's no dexterity bonus. Instead, dexterity determines what die size you rolled for initiative. Intelligence now gives you extra skill points. So if you're playing a specialist or a thief, you want a high intelligence, so you have extra skills. Strength determines how many items make one encumbrance point. Now, Lamentations has a really simple encumbrance system, which is one of its strengths, and this makes the encumbrance complicated again. Wisdom, like Charisma, determines how many dice you throw for saving throws, in this case against non-magic things. Now, the classes have changed. Uh, there's only fighters, magic users, and specialists. No clerics, no demi-humans. This is already influencing what kind of modules he will accept for submissions. He doesn't want any modules where the big bad guy is a cleric, which is kind of disappointing because I can remember some really cool TSR modules where the big bad guy was a cleric who was twice the level of the players. So he had spells, and he had lots of hit points, and he was pretty good at roll to hit. But, no, no clerics. And, you know, the question is, what about healing? Also, the experience points required to go up in level have increased. They're the same for all classes. And they double each level, which makes it really hard to advance the level once you get to high level. It used to be that it did this, but then leveled out at name level, and then there'd be a set amount per level after that. But not anymore. Now it doubles each level. 
So when I test played this, the Dwarf made it to 35th level, while the Daros, who was using this system, made it to like 10th level. Okay, so fighters get to roll double their hit dice at first level and keep the higher die. Everybody else rolls, just rolls their die. And also, it has you re-rolling all of your hit dice at every time you level up, which is something I was already doing. It's something that Dave Arneson came up with for his games, and I've been using it. This way, if you roll a 1, it doesn't stick with you forever. I was converted to this after I was playing a fighter who kept rolling 1s for hit points. And he had all kind of bonuses, so it didn't look as bad as it was, but still... It was annoying. I kept rolling a one for hit points. Okay, so it used to be that there were two categories of attack bonuses. There was melee and range. Now they've added firearms and guard. And fighters start at plus two in all categories. Everybody else starts at plus one on firearms and one other that's randomly determined. Now so firearms is separate from ranged, and this guard thing is just a more advantageous version of parry. So this is good. And there's some rules for holding an action. And then weapon damage has been changed, so all weapons now do 1d8 damage. But armor will count double against minor and small weapons, and half against great weapons and pole arms. Now, in order to make this work, I had to make myself a chart for the player that I was running this with that looked a lot like the first edition roll the hit chart. And here it is. Get it to focus. Okay, so we're running ascending armor class starting at 12 and going up. So if you look at the bottom of the chart, you need a 12 to hit armor class 12. And if you. So spear is his oversized weapon, bows, pistols, and nails are his medium weapon, and climbing claws were his small weapon. And there's some monsters here that we encountered in this particular dungeon, so I could easily see what armor class is that monster if he's fighting it. So as you see, armor class 20, you need a 16 with the large weapon, you need a 20 with the medium weapon, and a 20 with the small weapon. So that's, if you look at the chart, you can see how it progresses. It's like very fast for the large weapon. And one point per armor class for the medium weapon, and very slow for the small weapon. Okay, so the skills, there's some new skills, leadership, luck, medicine, and seamanship. So, and every character starts with a randomly determined plus three bonus on a skill, and a plus two bonus on another skill, and if you roll the same thing twice, you instead get a plus four bonus. So everybody has some random skill, maybe two skills that they're good at, while the specialist gets four plus one bonuses to skills at first level in addition to that, that, and then they can add two points to any skills beyond that. So, yeah, so they don't get to add all their bonuses to one skill or two skills like they did in the old version. They have to spread it out amongst four different skills. Now, the new skills, leadership, gives you a bonus to influence morale and loyalty if you make your skill roll. Um, luck gives you, uh, however many points you spend on luck is how many re-rolls you get per game session on the skill. Madison doubles the cover of hit points which is an important thing because there's no clerics. There's nobody who can do healing anymore. I've got a different version I use in my own games of this, a healing skill that works a little bit better than this one. 
so it makes specialists who can improve it pretty good at being substitute clerics. However, it's a skill they have to roll on, so if they fail it, then they, don't, they can even hurt the person, like it says in this version. Um, the seamanship is basically bushcraft for the sea. Now, they've also changed the way that you roll the skills. Instead of rolling and, you know, if it's, before it was like your skill chance is like 1 in 6 or 2 in 6 or 3 in 6. So you need to roll low. And that makes perfect sense to me. But now you have to roll a 6. You have to roll high. And your skill points are bonuses on your that. So you give you a better chance of rolling 6. Apparently newer players can't wrap their brain around a 2 in 6 chance of doing something. They, they have to roll high. So this makes it easier for them. It makes it harder for me to determine what is your chance of actually doing that. Okay, so the saving throw system, it's a new system in which your saving throws never, ever improve. They're based on your ability score. How, whatever your ability score is, you roll that many dice. If you roll two sixes, then you make your save. So the more dice you get to roll, the better your chance of making the save. If you only roll one six, you make a partial save, which that would do like half damage or some other halfway, depending on what the, you're rolling against. And if you don't roll any sixes, that's a failed save. And here's a comparison. It says it's more advantageous. It's more advantageous for low level players, but not for high level that because your chances never improve. And this partially reflects that most Lamentations modules are written for first level or low level. And the assumption is you're going to get killed before you make it higher level. And yes, um, players do lose a lot of characters. So there is a high death rate. But eventually, one of the characters succeeds and starts advancing in level. This is just like it was in the old days. So that's the new playtest rules, which, as I said, it was all right, but it's not the TSR game I know. So I tried it for this one player, and I'd probably let that class be played again with these rules, but it's easier just to use the rules that I know.